What happens when you marry the world's largest landmass and richest resource base with the world's factory floor and largest army? The world may soon find out the hardest of ways as China and Russia, Chusha, seem poised to tie their authoritarian knot. So which characterization best captures China's view of Russian President Vladimir Putin? One, Putin is an evil imperialist villain engaged in military adventurism in Eastern Europe who must be contained. Or two, Putin is a great national hero, rightfully using Russia's military might to reclaim lost territory stolen from it by a treacherous West. In fact, China's hero worship of Putin the Great is fully consistent with this familiar Beijing narrative. The West, led by an imperialist America, has systematically carved up the world at the expense of victim nations like Russia and China. Now, it is only right and just that Putin use Russia's growing military might to reclaim its lost territories, and that China has the right to do the same. Unfortunately, China's revanchist list is as long as Putin's inventory of former Soviet socialist republics that have strayed from the Russian fold. At the top is the island democracy of Taiwan, along with Japan's Senkaku Islands in the East China Sea. There is also Beijing's nine-dash line grab for 80% of the South China Sea, including all of the Paracel and Spratly Islands. China even lays historical claim to the Indian state of Arunachal Pradesh, which Beijing refers on maps to as Southern Tibet. In thinking about the far-ranging implication of a new Chushan military axis, it is well worth remembering this. The Russian landmass is almost double that of either China or the United States. Within its ample borders, Russia is also blessed with the world's largest oil reserves, the second largest coal reserves, 40% of the world's natural gas, one-fifth of its timber, and an abundance of other minerals and metals such as aluminum, copper, lead, platinum, and tin. On this resource base alone, it would seem to make sense for the energy superpower Russia to throw its lot in with the world's undisputed factory floor of China. On the military front, Russia is also China's leading supplier of highly advanced weapons systems. These include, for example, a new Kilo-class submarine Russia claims is the quietest in the world. Russia's weapons prowess also encompasses its world-class air defense systems. Remember, it was a Soviet SA-2 surface-to-air missile that shot down the unshootable American U-2 spy plane in 1960, while Soviet SAMs also helped take down over 2,000 American planes from the skies of North Vietnam, with Chinese technicians often pulling the triggers. Remember, too, it was a Soviet SA-3 surface-to-air missile that shot down a Lockheed F-117A stealth fighter from the Serbian skies in 1999. Chinese agents recovered the wreckage, and it was then used to develop China's own Chengdu J-20 stealth fighter. Of course, the most chilling dimension of what looks to be an impending Chushin wedding is one that sharply escalates Joseph Stalin's adage that quantity has a quality of its own. To wit, any long-term marriage between Russian weapons and China's massive military forces offers the prospect of an authoritarian alliance that may have both quantity and quality on its dark side. It's a war by algebra advantage that Clausewitz could only dream of while giving a budget-sequestered Pentagon a surfeit of nightmares. <laughs>